America has become a litigious society, but there's another way. Aloha, I'm Malia Zimmerman, and this is News Behind the News. And today you'll want to tune in because we'll have some interesting information that could save you a lot of money and give you a lot of peace. I want to welcome to the show Jerry Clay. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Malia. Sure. Okay, tell us about your organization, and first tell us about yourself so people know who's, who they're listening to. I'm a practicing attorney, been doing that uh, come September 47 years. Uh, 1984, after practicing about 20 years, I was trained as a commercial mediator, and it's like a light bulb went on in my head, and I said, this is a much better way than the American system of justice, the adversary system. The adversary system has a very limited uh, scope. The only thing you can do in the adversary system is to determine who's right and who's wrong. And that is really a very bad system, particularly for disputes. And that's that something coming from a lawyer, to hear a lawyer say that, right? You know, lawyers recognize limitations. That's what we're trained to do. We're trained to analyze. And when I got involved with mediation, I began to see it's a much better system because it's not just based on who's right and who's wrong, which is a system basically that never gets used to its fulfillment at all. 95% of all the civil cases filed in court never reach a decision. One party dies, one party goes bankrupt, and the vast majority of these cases just get settled. And they get settled basically because parties who go into the dispute thinking I'm right, the other guy's wrong, begin to see that there's some right in both sides. And as they go through the process, which involves discovery, which really involves showing why both sides have all kinds of warts, people begin to get scared and recognize that they could lose. And let me tell you, once parties are involved in litigation, the most important thing becomes not necessarily winning, but not losing. And so parties, as they go through this system, settle their cases. Right and wrong are the only two things that are looked at in the adversary system of civil justice. There is a better way, and that is to look at interests, what each party's interests are. And that is the philosophical basis of mediation, much different than the philosophical basis of the adversary system, which is just one party's right, the other party's wrong. And you know what? Even the system recognizes that it's not 100% right to win. In civil cases, it's what's based on, the winner is what's based on a preponderance of the evidence, preponderance, more than 50%. And if you talk about who has more than 50% in a dispute? It's based on imponderables. Who has the better lawyer, a lot of people think. Even if I don't have the better case, I have the better lawyer. Well, that's a crazy system of justice. There is a better way. Now tell us about that. You, you represent the Mediation Center of the Pacific. You are the president of the Board of Directors. And how did you get involved with that organization, and what is that organization about? Let's talk about the Mediation Center of the Pacific. Sure. It got started in the late 70s to provide volunteer mediation services, first of all, to neighbor-neighbor type disputes, divorce, family disputes. It, it assists people who are in small claims. Today, if you went to small claims court, the judge would send you in the hall, say, spend 30 minutes with the volunteer mediator. If you don't settle the dispute, come back in, I'll hear it and make a decision. And close to 50% of all the cases get settled in 30 minutes in the hall. If you have a temporary restraining order situation, the judge will send you out in the hall to meet with a volunteer mediator from the Mediation Center of the Pacific. You can spend up to an hour and a half. And about 70% of the TRO cases get settled in an hour and a half in the hall. The Mediation Center of the Pacific trains people like you, like lawyers, like anyone who feels they have a desire to help people in the techniques to help people see their own interests, and then sends them out as volunteers to be able to assist parties. That's a wonderful gift to be able to, first of all, to be able to do that and to get that kind of training and, and also to be able to help people like that. Right. Most of us have a lot of those qualities innate, particularly if parents have been mediating with their children all their life. They have these gifts innately. 
but there has been a lot of research work done on making these, uh, these traits into techniques that can be used with parties. And those techniques can assist in helping each side see what's in their best interest, what necessarily they're trying to get, but is not necessarily in their best interest, but might be in the other side's best interest. And so what the mediator does by working with each side is showing them, through having them see themselves what is important, what is lesser important, so that they can try to aim to get what's important, they can give up what's lesser important, which might be important to the other side. Something, sometimes things as simple as an apology can work far in resolving a dispute. That's true. I know that people have just wanted a simple apology sometimes when they feel wronged, and, and that can uh, go a long way if somebody's Absolutely. willing to do that. It might save them, actually save them a lot of money in the end, right? Absolutely. Well, tell us about um, some of the disputes that might get settled. You mentioned divorce. You mentioned uh, TROs. What kind of um, cases usually go through the Mediation Center of the Pacific, uh, big picture? And then also, how many people in Hawaii do you think use these services, or, or how many cases do you, th do you see going through? Last year, 2013, approximately 6,000 people used the services of the Mediation Center of the Pacific, which means that there were at least 3,000 disputes. Uh, perhaps a few disputes had more than two parties, but basically they have two parties. So we served about 6,000 people. Everything from family court, small claims court, temporary restraining orders, neighbor-neighbor uh, -neighbor disputes, some public policy disputes. Um, one of the big areas these days is actions between non-married parents who are trying to have parenting agreements that they can't agree. It's a terrible way to go to court because when you go to court, parenting amongst non-married is handled as a paternity action. It's a terrible place to try to work out parenting arrangements. The Mediation Center of the Pacific has some advanced training for people to work on these types of non-married couples working on parenting disputes. The idea is, is basically every relationship-based dispute should be mediated. If it doesn't work, if the mediator finds that the parties are just too intransigent, too emotional, they always have the option to go back to court. It's a non-lose situation to bring in a mediator and try to get the relationship problem resolved and perhaps the relationship restored. It works particularly well with people who have been doing business with one another. Been a relationship for years. And if you think about relationships, relationships are based on talking. Talking, continuing to talk. People don't always see eye to eye, so they're constantly trying to see each other's perspective. They talk, they negotiate, they compromise, they, they settle problems as they go along. And the way human nature works is that can go on for months, years, decades, until parties who are in a relationship get into a dispute where one, all of a, one party all of a sudden feels I'm right, I know I'm right, I feel I'm right. The other one says, no, you're wrong, I'm right. I know I'm right, and they begin to put emotional, negative emotional charges on their positions. And when people begin to get emotional, what happens is they have a more and more difficult time continuing to talk, to negotiate, because they begin to put anger and frustration and sometimes hatred into the situation till they get to the point where they can't continue to talk to one another. And what happens in American society? We then have as our mindset, go to a lawyer. Lawyers are trained in the adversary system of justice. The idea being that there is a right in every dispute and there is a wrong in every dispute and the one with the right should win. Well, coming out of a relationship, that's a bad way to try to resolve problems. And that's what I saw when I became trained as a mediator. However, in law schools today, we train almost exclusively in the adversary system of justice. It's really a bad way for society to consider resolving its disputes. Now, do you have uh, business people that come to you as well? Is it just personal, or, or do you, in the small claims court, do you have small businesses, or what kinds of people can come? Anybody, every dispute, no matter what it is, is better off being mediated than it is going into the adversary system. So if you talk about 
large disputes that involve large sums of money, there are a cadre of mediators, myself included, who sell our services by the hour to assist in these kinds of large disputes. When it comes to smaller disputes, personal disputes, disputes that really don't involve a large sum of money, those disputes, for the most part, will go to the uh, Mediation Center of the Pacific, where they will be assigned a volunteer mediator to assist them in their dispute. If parties go to small claims court, they will be assigned to go into the hall where a volunteer will have been sent to assist these parties. So for larger cases, you have mediators who are being paid by the hour. For smaller cases, you have lots and lots of volunteers at the Mediation Center to assist parties. Now, as the president of the organization, do you also um, take on quite a few cases, or how does it work with um, dividing up the work, and, and how can, what can people expect? Sure. when they, Will they see you when they walk in the door? Uh, they won't see me. <laughs> I'm a volunteer on the board of directors. I got elected to be the president, and I look to see if we can't guide the Mediation Center to do greater good for our society. And that's one of our programs this year, to try to spread the word that parties are better off going to mediation. And we have programs to try to spread the word. And one of our programs this year is to have people begin to change their thinking about getting disputes resolved. And our, uh, our tool to change thinking is something we're calling the Hawaii Mediation Pledge. This is a document that we are going out to organizations and speaking to them, telling them why their members of their organization would be better off not suing one another, in fact, not suing anybody else in any other organization, but they would both be better off by having the services of a mediator come into the dispute. And so what we're doing is we're explaining why mediation is superior and asking people to voluntarily sign a document that says, I pledge that if I get into a dispute with another person who has signed the pledge, I pledge that I will not go into the legal system. I pledge we will retain the services of a mediator to assist us in getting our dispute resolved between ourselves. And uh, right now I've been doing this for, as I say, since 1984, 30 years. And I've probably at this point done close to 2,000 mediations. Given enough time, given enough resources, I feel I can almost resolve virtually any dispute that comes to me. And other mediators who have a similar experience are having similar types of positive results. Mediation is a no-lose proposition that anybody in any relationship-based dispute should go into. Great. Well, Maybe we have uh, about 15 minutes in the show, so I was hoping you could give people examples, maybe some success stories. I know you can't tell people's names and probably disclose any personal information, but is there anything you can tell about um, some you know, cases that you were personally involved with or that you know the center was, or, or even national cases that you, you might have seen resolved through mediation that you can see that uh, you can kind of use to explain to people what it's about? Well, we can start internationally. Right mm -hmm. now, you've got mediation going on for the Syria dispute. And mediation is going on all over the world. The Palestinian-Israeli dispute is being mediated. I have had just numerous types of cases where relationships have been made better. Uh, I had a dispute between a large tenant of a shopping center and the developer where these parties were constantly at one another. They just loved fighting with each other. And they got into a dispute where they were about to go into a lengthy arbitration, which is also an adversary dispute, when they came to me and said about four days before, let's try a half day of mediation. And after talking to the two parties and their attorneys who were there, I indicated to them separately, and the way mediation works is you meet with each party separately. In large cases, the parties will have their attorneys. And you listen to them, you have them tell you emotionally so that they get to vent their emotions, and then you begin to focus on where they're strong, where they're weak. This particular case had a situation where it looked like one party was going to lose to me and the other one wasn't. And so I say to that one party, has your lawyer told you 100% you're guaranteed to win? And the lawyer says, of course I haven't told him that. I said, are you guaranteeing 75%? 
says, no, I haven't told them that. I said, would you like to get my take on whether you'll win or lose? And the lawyer says, I'm not sure we need that. I said, why don't you go into the hall and talk with your lawyer to see if you would like my opinion based on everything I've read, based on all the filings. And he comes back and he says, I think I would like your opinion. And I explained to them why, as a lawyer, somebody seasoned in this type of dispute, I think they're going to have a hard time winning. And he says, what can you get for me since I want to save face? And I said, let me see what I can do. And I talked to the other side, and I, compromise, I find a compromise that will at least allow the first person to save face, to walk out of the dispute without a loss. And so afterwards, they come back in, and I say, OK, we now have a settlement. Let's write it up now so that nobody changes their mind. So the two lawyers are writing it up, and I see the two clients who were having the dispute, who couldn't talk to each other, now talking to each other about their upcoming vacations. Very, very positive result. Uh, and I, if that hadn't happened, if you hadn't been able to do that, what could, how long could they have gone on with their litigation? Well, their arbitration would have gone on for probably four or five days, and somebody would have ended up being the loser. And that would have made the relationship, which was a long-term lease, be very, very uh, affected as they went forward. Right. So, and then if you, if you don't get into arbitration and you, you get into the legal system and you have to wait for trials and things like that, it can be much longer, right? It can be many, many years. I've seen cases go on five years uh, because the legal system is very ponderous. It is trying to find out every little fact and have every little fact and every little issue put before the judge to be decided. So it is trying to make a quantitative decision at the end based on all this information, who's more than 51% right. It's a crazy system. It really doesn't work well, particularly for, for disputes that result from a relationship. And so you've gotten involved to launch this campaign. And, um, and so people basically, just the average person on the street, is that who you want to sign it? Or is it somebody that's in a dispute? or what? We are what? looking for everybody in Hawaii to become aware. The idea that the Mediation Center of the Pacific has this year is we're trying to have people have a mindset change to when they have a dispute, don't think going to court, think about retaining the services of mediator and to have people talk about this at their parties at their barbecues so that it becomes a new a new subject to conversation that there's a better way when we have disputes rather than going into court rather let's get a mediator to help us both see what our own best interests are and to do that what our goal is by June 30th, 2014, five months from now, to see if we can't get 10,000 people to sign a pledge. And by June 30, 2015, let's see if we can't mushroom to have 100,000 people to sign this pledge. The idea being, if we get those kinds of big numbers, the media is going to begin to focus on, there's something going on in society. There's something that's more positive going on in society. We should begin to cover this. And there could be a mindset change in America. That's what the real big goal is. That's great. OK, well, for people that didn't go to law school or haven't been through uh, the system, <laughs> Uh, can you explain the difference a little bit so people understand between mediation, arbitration, those are two, and then, you know, just ba basic litigation? Lawsuits. Okay. Lawsuit is, as I said, a binary system. There are only two results, win or lose. The idea being that you're going to court, and each side's going to totally prepare, they're going to come into court, there's going to be a fight, a clash, and the truth will come out. It's crazy. Because only 51% needs to come out to win. And so you're constantly vying to be able to get over the, and quantitatively it doesn't really ever come down. No, no judge is going there and saying plus two, plus 17, minus third. I mean, it's a crazy system. In the end, the judge will look at different issues, saying who wins on who, which issue, and then come to some sort of a conclusion. He's more right than the other, and then justify that under the law. And why do we have appeals? Because we say the judge was wrong. So let's have another court look at it again and say, was the judge right or wrong? And then if that court isn't, uh, if one side doesn't like that court, we go to the Supreme. I mean, 
it's a very ponderous system to, private, to decide who's right and who's wrong. And it can cost millions of dollars. It can cost millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. In big lawsuits, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. When you're talking about things like tobacco and, you know, pharmaceutical issues, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. And we had that recent, was it Sony versus Apple, I think it was, or one of the uh, big companies, the technology companies battling over something that was in the, uh, you know, over the, over a billion when it came to the, the settlement. So it can be a quite a bit of money. For legal fees. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. So in terms of, um, you know, what, and for the average person who might just be a person or a small business owner, this can really help them. Because I do get people calling me and saying, well, you know, I'm going through divorce and I, I can't afford a lawyer or I really can't afford an expensive lawyer. Or I can't afford a down payment. And so they can actually come to you without a lawyer. They can call the Mediation Center of the Pacific. I'll give you the phone number. Okay, do it. Let please. our listeners write it down. Okay. 521-6767 and say, I'm going through a divorce. I've talked to my spouse. We're willing to go to mediation. Would you, send, would you assign a mediator to our case? The Mediation Center of the Pacific has rooms where the mediation can be held. There is a very small fee based on a sliding scale of earnings. The fee basically is an administrative fee. That's all. And the mediators are volunteers. If it's a bigger dispute and parties want to have a mediator of their choice, there are numerous administration organizations. There's one big one in Hawaii that they could call and they could look up in the phone book that name. We don't want to give anybody a leg up here. Right. But there are lots of mediators mm -hmm. that charge fees to do it. My present fee is around $375 an hour, and that can be small in comparison as to what it would cost to go through the litigation system. So depending on the type of dispute, there are numerous ways to get into mediation. Mediation Center of the Pacific, particularly for family disputes, small disputes, and, medi and disputes that go to small claims court will automatically be put in there. As a matter of fact, lawyers recognize the benefit of this, and the court has recognized the benefit of this. We have a court rule here in Hawaii that allows any party at any time during a lawsuit to ask the judge, to petition the judge, to order the case to go to mediation. And the judge can do that. And it is almost without exception that judges do, when asked, send the case out to mediation. And both sides have to agree to be in the mediation, right? They can't Unless just... the court orders it, okay. then they have to go. They have to, yeah. Mediation is a volunteer process. You can quit it at any time. And it is the skill of the mediator that keeps the thing going so that they can keep parties talking until they find some sort of what we call in mediation the magic moment when both parties recognize something they didn't see before as a reason that they can both benefit by settling. And you've done that 2,000 times? Approximately, So yes. how do you feel after you do that? Just, just curious. It must feel pretty good. <laughs> it does feel good because you have helped parties resolve a big problem in their life. If you get involved in a lawsuit, in a lawsuit it is all-consuming. Because you are going to be asked questions and you don't know what they are, you spend hours and nights and days preparing, thinking. I mean, there is nothing productive that comes out of a lawsuit. So you lose all that time, that productive time that you could be spending doing something that could benefit society, only thinking about how you will prepare your answers in a lawsuit. You don't go into a lawsuit thinking it. When you get into a lawsuit, believe me, that is the all-consuming idea. I can't be shown up. And it's also just so much stress, so much money, and so just, just many, many problems. Absolutely. Health problems, I All mean, those family things. problems. Right. I mean, you get into a health problem. Now you've got to settle the lawsuit because of the health problem. You've got to settle the lawsuit perhaps on terrible terms because the other side has been trying to destroy you. They don't want to give anything up. So it is so much better to start by having the services of a mediator assist both sides in confidence in separate rooms at separate times, working through what the problems are and what they might be seeing as their own best interests. For people who might be just tuning in, let's go over one more time what kinds of cases that you take. So you take divorce, and maybe you can go over that one more time, TRO. Any kind of family matters. Mm -hmm. The Mediation Center has volunteer mediators at the TRO court has volunteer mediators at small claims court, has volunteer mediators at family court, and 
family court assigns on more complex cases that mediation, the party should call the Mediation Center of the Pacific and work their case out at the Mediation Center. Uh, condominium cases are mediated, condominium disputes, and there are lots of those these days. Uh, employment disputes are mediated. Any kind of dispute arising out of a relationship should be mediated. Good. Okay, that's good for people to, to get the big picture and uh, understand and, what's available to them. And big disputes particularly should be mediated. Mm -hmm because corporations don't want to lose the productive time of these very expensive CEOs who are preparing for depositions, who are thinking about what this loss could cause them. So much better to be able to get it behind them and go on with productive life. So when people go to your website, um, what can they expect? And can you remind me of the website address again? We can pull it up on the, on the, um, on the page. I think it's uh, mediationhawaii.org. Or mediate. mediate, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> mediate. Uh, Hawaii.org. Right. And so people can go to that website. You can find the phone number you mentioned before, 521-6767. Correct. Okay. And also um, be able to see more. It looks like it talks about your basic background and, and um, learning more about it and, and your events and things like that and taking the pledge, most importantly. Most importantly, these days, we are trying to get big numbers to sign the pledge. We are looking for organizations who will call us and have one of our people from our Speakers Bureau go out and chat with their organization and tell their members why their members would be so much better off mediating and to get them to think about mediation, to sign a pledge, the names of which will go up on the Mediation Center of the Pacific website so that if somebody perhaps from a church organization who signed the pledge and somebody from a service organization, a Rotary Alliance who signed the pledge, they will find the names and then they'll be able to call one another and say, you signed the pledge, let's go to mediation before we square off, get lawyers and go to court. Great, okay. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. And I'm so glad that uh, people can learn more about your organization and we encourage people to go ahead and take advantage of that because sometime in your life, you'll probably be in a dispute. That and so is, this is good to remember. That is a truism, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been News Behind the News, Aloha. <laughs>